Hey guys, Spudknocker here, as always, and today I can't tell you how excited I am to finally be able to bring you guys a video on how to employ the AGM-65 Maverick in conjunction with the F-16C Fighting Falcon here in DCS. Now today's update encompassed a heck of a lot more than just the AGM-65 on the F-16, and I will try to make as many videos as I possibly can to bring to you guys to get you up to speed on not just the changes to the F-16, but also the AV-8 and a few other aircraft as well. Now one of the additions beyond just the Maverick and the Harm that was put into the F-16 and kind of snuck under the radar, but one I'm very thankful to ED for, was the addition of many, many skins for lots of different countries for the F-16. For the key knight among you, you'll see that this is actually an Italian F-16, and I guess the wing commander on and Serlik for the Italian Air Force, he went and found a bunch of AGM-65s in an old warehouse or weapons bunker uh, near in Serlik, because the AGM-65 is not necessarily a totally frontline weapon for F-16 squadrons these days, especially in the counterinsurgency environment that most F-16 squadrons will find themselves in. Uh, other weapons, such as the JBU-54, all flavors of JDAMs, uh, laser-guided bombs are going to be far more accurate and far more uh, employable in the counterinsurgency kind of campaigns that we find ourselves in here in the 21st century. However, the AGM-65 is definitely a large part of the inventories of many, many countries, not to mention Israel and, of course, uh, Italy and just countless countries across the world, and it lends itself to being very, very potent against large formations of armor, like we would see in a Cold War Gone Hot scenario, the Arab-Israeli conflicts of 1973 and 1981, as well as Operation Desert Storm in 1991, and probably the mo more like the initial invasion of Iraq in 2003. But as we can see here, we have six AGM-65s loaded on our F-16 here today, and this is very much not a prototypical loadout that you would see. The F-16 is cleared to carry and can carry this loadout, but it's more of a doomsday type scenario that you would find yourself in with six AGM-65s on your F-16. The inside uh, weapon on that Lao 88, as you can see, lines up pretty perfectly with the horizontal stabilizer on our F-16, and so you're gonna be damaging and burning up your, your horizontal stabs pretty darn quickly. But if it's 1985 and the Soviets are pouring armor through the Fulda Gap, and your life expectancy and the expectancy of the life of your F-16 is dropping below 30 minutes, then who cares? Get out and shack as many of those tanks as you possibly can to help out your A-10 brethren and your other F-16 guys as they're trying to stop that armor from coming through. So a more prototypical loadout on a Lao 88 for an F-16 carrying a bunch of Mavericks is going to be four times AGM-65s on this uh, uh, rack. And so the innermost weapons on the left-hand side there that we can see, or on the right-hand side, uh, if you're looking at the other side, are going to be deleted from this loadout just to make sure that we don't burn and damage our horizontal stabs on our F-16 here. And, of course, you guys are all thinking, man, WAG's video sure made this sound complicated and really difficult. But, in reality, when it comes to just simply jumping in and employing the AGM-65, it is actually very, very simple and actually, in my opinion, much more foolproof than when you're trying to use it in conjunction with other aircraft like the AV-8B Harrier and F-18C Hornet. So without further ado, and I should shut up here, I'll go ahead and hop in the cockpit and we'll get started. So first thing I like to do in the F-16 here is of course get my cockpit all set up and ready for combat. The way I like to have it set up and we'll make sure everything's on. With an air start, it's always a good idea to make sure all your countermeasures are set up the way you want it set up. All that good stuff. We'll go over to twiz mode, we'll push it out to 80, asthma 30, two bar scan. And next thing, of course, we're going to go ahead and pull up our SMS page. We'll pop into air to ground mode. We've got our AGM-65 Delta. We've got six of them, of course, on each wing and we'll manually turn on the power by that OBS button there. Now, we're getting a little bit of a glare here, so we'll go ahead and bring our SMS page over here, and we'll go ahead and on our empty OSB here, we'll double click and bring up our weapons page, because the weapons page is actually where your imagery from your Maverick is going to be displayed. It isn't a secondary page on your SMS like in the F-18 or the AV-8B Harrier. So we'll go ahead and pop her out of autopilot mode and 
the Altabach Dam is right about right here, off at our about our one o'clock ish, and uh, we've got some ISIS fighters down there with some stolen armor from looted from Syrian armories. They've got some ZSU 23s, some trucks down there, and they're generally causing hell for the residents of Altabach, and we want to make sure that we can get rid of them. You guys will see here that it is actually quite easy to ripple off a bunch of Mavericks all at once because it is quite easy to slew a Maverick to acquire and then launch from the F-16 here. So for now we'll go ahead and put her into bore sight mode and that will allow us to keep the aircraft and our weapons track on the correct plane for us. And I talked a little bit longer than I wanted to earlier. And we'll just kind of orbit here and wait for our Mavericks to time out. As Wag said, it took about three minutes. Of course, his video is fantastic and chock full of fantastic information that you need to know about the Maverick and the F-16. But this is a video more or less geared towards getting you guys up and running in with the AGM-65 as quickly as possible. I will say though, it definitely looks very, very cool to look over on your wing and see six Mavericks, three on a side, on your little F-16. It is quite the little Maverick shooter with the very short time I've had with Mavericks so far, and I can honestly see why the F-16 was originally kind of chosen by the Air Force back in the day to try and replace the A-10 with the very much modified A-16 variant because it just works really, really well as a platform for launching AGM-65s, but of course, as we all know, an F-16 will really never ever reach a point where it can replace a A-10. The specialized gun pods that the Air Force built for the A-16 and were employed with their A-16 squadron in the 1991 Desert uh, Storm, uh, Persian Gulf War, vibrated so violently that they shook apart their F-16s and the maintenance on those F-16s from their short sorties was incredibly intensive and the Air Force decided to download those specialized gun pods off of their A-16s and have them just become dedicated Maverick shooters. So we've got our video feed up on our right MFD here and we'll go ahead and make it soy by going DMS down and we'll go over to visual mode, I find that visual mode is the easiest mode to actually acquire targets and start firing your Mavericks. And we can see our target area around this dam over here is very easy and prominent for us to see. Foresight mode is good. But visual mode is better because it ground stabilizes the seeker head of the weapon for you. And so we'll come in at a nice steep angle. And we'll start slewing our Maverick around. We'll zoom in on our screen here and we'll hit the expand button to actually zoom on in. And we can see we've definitely got some vehicles over here. And we'll go TMS forward to lock up this first vehicle. and. Weapon release switch, and that's literally all you gotta do. It's that quick, that easy. Kind of lower our intensity of our HUD symbology slightly here as the sun starts to set down past that horizon. And we can watch the flight path of this missile. And bye-bye Shilka. That's definitely a good target to get rid of to start off here. And now you guys will notice that the visual uh, symbology for visual mode on the AGM-65 is now off of our HUD here, denoted by this uh, square with an X through it. And I will show you guys how to get that back and show you guys how to use this to your advantage. So right now, your Maverick Seekers are ground stabilized on a point on the ground. 
it is in fact where we just shacked that Shilka. So we can use that to then bring the aircraft around and get our Maverick sleeker heads to be slewed directly onto that point. Now it's not 100% effective because the uh, gyros within the Mavericks and the gyros that are trying to keep that ground point uh, in our INS system of our F-16 are not as precise as if we were using the TGP for handoffs. So it's close enough to help you guys out when it comes to slowing that Maverick around. So we'll give ourselves a little bit of separation from our target. And you guys will notice right off the bat here that the very rigid nature of the FCS in the F-16 allows you to be an incredibly stable launch platform for your Mavericks. You can literally take your hand off the stick and concentrate completely and totally on lining up your Maverick shots and completely and totally neglect flying the airplane. Try doing that in the AVAB or even the F-18 and it's not going to be nearly as easy for you guys. All right. So we can see here that the original box for our visual mode where it was ground stabilized is now walked quite far, especially during that tight turn we just made. But you can hit the missile step button to bring the Maverick Seeker head and slew it to wherever your velocity vector is. So say we want to line up the velocity vector right on top of that dam and then slew our missile there. It's very, very easy to do so. We can then use our expand button to then move it up. Why don't we try shacking one of these vehicles actually on the dam? Okay, it's having a little bit of hard time there. We'll go TMS backwards to cancel that lockup since it was having a hard time. And there's a good lock on. It's switching between two targets, but it will engage either one of those. And for me, knowing that it's all bad guys down there, I don't really mind which vehicle it goes for as long as it does go for a vehicle. And we can see the flight path of this Maverick coming on down. And it went for the first vehicle between the two vehicles that it was having a hard time differentiating between. So as long as your crosshairs on your Maverick page are collapsed, even if it is walking back and forth, kind of jiggling back and forth between two targets, if you press and hold that weapons release button, it will go ahead and track one of those targets at least and go in for the kill. Just a little bit of trim to trim our jet back out. Man, what I really love about the Syria map is just how much relief there is on the ground. Even in these very flat areas to the, in the northern parts of Syria, nearing the border with Turkey and the very far western border of Iraq, the fact that the terrain mesh is so detailed that when the sun is low on the horizon, it makes things very, very pretty. So I think that was done very well in this map, and even these very flat areas can be very exciting to fly over. Very interesting to fly over as well. Aleppo is just off there, off at our about our 10 o'clock. And we're turning away from Aleppo right now, coming back to the Altabak Dam. And we're coming in. And we can see, wow, it's really walked pretty far away, but no problem. We will just use the missile step button to bring our lock right back to where we need it to be. Expand mode. Let's see if we can lock up this one of these vehicles here. We did. And rifle. And as you guys can see, that ground stabilization, when we turn away from it, really doesn't work all that well. It's kind of in the general over there kind of direction, but you just have to hit that missile button in order to bring it back to exactly to where you want it. Oh. 
Okay guys, so we just ran into a really weird bug in DCS that I've never encountered before, and that was all of the units on the map all despawned all at once. So we're in a new MIZ here, and we're going to go ahead and expend all three of the Mavericks that we have left on the aircraft all at once in one pass to show you guys that the F-16 is such a stable AGM-65 launch platform that you can release multiple Mavericks in one pass very, very easily and really show you guys how potent of a weapon the Maverick is against uh, large formations of armor such as what would be coming through the Fulda Gap or streaming across the Sinai in the 1973 Yom Kippur War or coming down through the Bekaa Valley in 1981 or across the desert sands of Iraq in 1991. So we'll go ahead and come around here. We've got uh, three tanks set up just on the backside of our dam here. And so you guys will see that there are no fires at the moment, and that's because we are in a new MIZ, and I have no idea what caused that bug, but it seemed to be an issue with the time of day, which is very weird. But anyway, we'll go missile step switch to bring our Maverick to the right spot that we want it. We'll go expand switch and we'll start queuing up these missile shots. So we'll go from left to right on these three tanks. There's one. Back to the dam. Here's two. Back to the dam again. And we got one more vehicle right here. And there's three. Three Mavericks off in one pass, got a little bit closer than I would have wanted to as it took a little bit longer to actually acquire that third target, but it should lead to some pretty darn simultaneous hits on these, on these tanks. And there we go. There's three shacks right in a row there. Boom, boom, boom. We can see them right there off of our left wing. And uh, I'm sure you guys are as pumped as I am to finally have the AGM-65 available for the F-16. We got new skins, we got the harms, man, we're feeling pretty happy about it right now here in DCS. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it kind of showed you that it's not quite as intimidating to use the AGM-65 as we kind of saw in the video that was produced by Matt Wagner. He makes awesome, fantastic videos, but man, he sure makes it look complicated by giving you as much information as he possibly can in the shortest amount of time, which I certainly appreciate, but I uh, wanted to bring you guys up to speed as quickly as possible here. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching the video, and I uh, hope you guys uh, like and subscribe uh, as a result of this video. And of course, fly safe out there, guys, and uh, we'll see you in the next one.